Good guys, we're back at it again with another video. As you can see by the title, we got Scotty Barnes today. Before we get to the video, before we get to all that, I gotta ask y'all this question. Who had insider information? One of y'all has some type of insider information, I swear, because when I asked yesterday, who would you rather see, Scotty Barnes or James Booknight? I thought it was almost rhetorical because I'm like, oh yeah, they're definitely gonna wanna see Booknight because everybody wants to see the flash, the bounce, and he's a scorer, Scotty's more you know, defense, passing. I'm like, everybody gonna wanna see book night. All of a sudden I get more comments from Scotty. I get DM DMs about Scotty. So I'm in shock. At first I'm in shock that y'all wanted to see Scotty over book night. Then the draft comes and Scotty goes four over Jalen Suggs. So which one of y'all knew something? Somebody must've had some insider information. You ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? DM me if you know what I'm saying. But one of y'all had to, one of y'all had, had to know something. I swear, had to, had to. So if you if you up on some game, you know what I'm saying, go ahead and let me know. But getting back to Scotty, like I'm, I've been aware of his game, you know, ever since he was younger, like 16. I think when he was on Team USA, I knew about him, stuff like that. So, you know, when I did see him go four, I know his game. And I, I really did. I really honestly like did not expect it like at all. And with his game, because he is more, you know, passing centric, defense centric, Instead of, you know, breaking it down into pick and roll and isolations, two separate things, because he doesn't really, he's not really a scorer like that. We're going to put it together in, into just like half court as in like what he does within a half court offense, because when he has the ball in his hands, he does have it in his hands a lot, but he isn't out there, you know, trying to rock anybody, really trying to score like that. He's more trying to facilitate, get everybody around him better. I'm not, I'm not going to hold you guys up any longer. Let's go. Scotty is at his best in transition, and at 6'9", he has no problem bringing the ball up and finishing in traffic. As he pushes the break on this possession, I want you guys to notice how he's playing at his own pace and doesn't get sped up, which allows him to recognize the mismatch and score over the smaller defender. A similar play on this possession, there aren't many 6'9 athletes who are able to slow their momentum like this and finish smoothly. Scotty's also great at running the floor in transition, and once he gets ahead of steam, it's on your head. While Scotty isn't the best of shooters up to this point in his career, he does show over these next two possessions flashes of improvement in that area. Here, a Hezzy into a pull-up three in transition. That's a tough shot. And then on this next possession, running as the trail spot, being able to step into his three and knock it down. Just like in transition, Scotty's pretty comfortable with the ball in his hands and can even initiate offense in half-court sets, as you can see here, rejecting this ball screen and finishing strong. A majority of the time within the half court set, Scotty will try and get to his right hand, whether that be off a of pick and roll or ISO, as you can see here, breaking down Chandi Brown and finishing over the seven footer. He also shows great patience on offense, which is something you don't see that often from players of his stature. As you can see here, he comes off the ball screen and actually snakes it, taking his time, making sure he gets to his spot and then finishing over the big. As I said before, once Scotty gets the ball in the half court, he's going to try and get to that right hand. And if he gets by you, he has bad intentions once he gets to the rim. Scotty's passing ability is one of the best parts of his game, as you can see here, being able to manipulate the defense by looking to the left and throwing his teammate open. Because Scotty plays at his own pace, when he comes off of the pick and roll, he's able to easily read defenses and make the right play. Scotty also has great touch and accuracy on his passes, as you can see here, throwing the perfectly placed oop. This play might seem simple, but Scotty being able to read the defense and throw a laser across his body is extremely difficult. This possession is not only a good example of how great Scotty is defensively, but it's also a look of how that part of his game is going to translate to the next level. Watch how he hounds the five men, eventually causing them to have to give the ball up to the guard. And once the ball screen comes, he gets the switch, moves his feet, and eventually forces the guard to take a really tough shot, getting his team to stop. Here he is within that same game, guarding five-star big man and recent draft pick, Deron Sharp. Watch how he takes the bumps, and I froze it here because I want you guys to notice because of Scotty's length, he can affect bigger players, causing them to miss. He always shows excellent effort on the defensive end, as you can see here, getting the chase down. Not much to say on this possession except for Scotty 6'9", and that's a point guard he's guarding.
Even though Scotty is comfortable with the ball in his hands a majority of the time when guarded by quicker, smaller players, he can sometimes get a little loose with it. Because of his size, there are times when Scotty's going downhill that he can get out of control, as you can see here, missing his teammate in the corner, drawing the charge. As I said earlier, Scotty isn't the best of shooters up to this point, so as you can see, he does struggle shooting off the dribble, as well as shooting with his feet set at points. I said I was shocked about Scotty going forward. Don't take that as me knocking his game, calling him trash, because trust me, I understand the plight of, you know, the underrated player play who doesn't get appreciation simply because he doesn't go out there and drop 30 a night because some people don't understand there are other ways to affect the game important ways to affect the game other than scoring rebounding passing being a good teammate giving the extra effort things like that taking charges people don't see all that all they want to see is the flashy stuff which is why i was kind of surprised you guys wanted to see book night over scotty but uh getting into his game in terms of the scoring part Transition is probably where he's at his best in terms of scoring because his combination of size, athleticism, skill, you know, ball handling, he has no problem getting the ball off the backboard, taking off. If there's a, a smaller player on him, he has pace with his handle. So if there's a smaller player on him and he recognizes it, okay, let me slow down. Let me bring him in the paint and I'm going to just hook him to death. I have a bigger player in front of me in transition. I'm quicker than him. Let me just hezzy and I'll buy him. And once I get him behind me, we dunk in the ball every single time. That's another thing. Scotty is, that's one thing I noticed when, when he was younger. Like this dude, I low key thought something must have been wrong with him because I remember every single play, he would be like just screaming. Or I seen the one clip, he got it, like we was back in high school, he got it like on a fast break. He was ahead of everybody else. I ain't never seen nobody do this. Dude got the ball, looked back at the defense, waited for him to get there and dunk. So from that point on, I'm like, okay, he a little different, you know, from everybody else. So that I think because he is so high effort, that's going to bode well for him in the future. Uh, getting into, and part of the reason why we split up pick and roll in isolation, he has the ball in his hands a lot. He does come off pick and rolls. He does get isos, but when he does get them, he's not really trying to score, right? Because he is more of a straight line driver. You're not going to see him, oh, I'm going this way. Oh, no, I'm going this way. Oh, I'm going this way. He's not really going to shift anybody like that. Like you saw in the pick and roll, if the defender doesn't, if the big doesn't hedge, he's just going to go straight down here. He's going to dunk it. Or the defender jumps out. He's just going to reject it. He's going straight downhill. He's going to finish. Like, it's not, you never really see him do this, 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 this. Even with the ISO with Chon, with Chondi Brown, he didn't really play with it. He just get you on his head, and then once he gets in that paint, he's going to try and dunk on you, like I said, because he's such a high-energy player. Now, part of that pick and roll is gets into the one of the best parts of his game, especially at his size, is that passing ability, right? So at 6'9", six, 6'8", six, because he can see over everybody on the entire court and he plays with pace, especially in transition, he draws so much attention. Like I saw just one little look, he can throw his teammate open or back to pick and roll. He comes off the pick and roll, he has pace, he can snake ball screens. You don't see a lot of players that size being able to do that. Snake the ball screen, keep the defender on his back, wait for the big to step up, then I'm going to toss the oop. Or I come off the ball screen, I recognize that the defender on the far side of the court has to shift over. Let me throw a laser right across the court, right into my teammate's shooting pocket just to shoot three. Like There aren't many players at that height that have that vision that can do things like that. And then finally, with him, one of his biggest calling cards, something I, I mess with, defense defense right because he can legitimately legitimately guard one through five i showed you the first defensive clip he was guarding garrison brooks who was all conference in the acc at north carolina he makes garrison give it up then he guards i think that was who number two caleb love i think he was a five-star point guard guards him one-on-one -on -one, causes him to take a horrible shot hits the backboard goes off the other side they get the rebound then in that same game Bro guarded, uh, I don't even know how to say his name. I think it's like Duran or something like that. Duran Sharp. He was a five-star. He just got drafted. Guarded him one-on-one -on, -one on the block. And his arms are so long, it, he can affect bigger player shots. So while I was surprised that he went four, I want you guys to look at a big picture, right? So the Magic, the Magic who they thought, um, my bad, the Raptors who they thought were going to take Jalen Suggs, we don't know if Kyle Lowry's going to leave, right? That, that, was, that was what they thought. Kyle Lowry's going to leave. We need Suggs to come in, 
be our be our guard. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, we just got Russell Westbrook on the Lakers. Kyle Lowry might not be leaving. You know what I'm saying? So now you really just need, now you have, you have Kyle Lowry. You have Fred Van Fleet. You have um, Gary Trent Jr. So you have shooters. So that's why you take Scotty instead of Jalen Suggs because now you need a playmaker. You don't need another guard who can score. You know what I'm saying? You have those. You have Van Fleet. You have Gary Trent. You have uh, Kyle Lowry. Now you just need a playmaker, a Draymond type, who can get on the court immediately, plug and play, and can instantly make your team better, getting everybody open shots, things like that, getting like I like you saw, getting in transition. He's going to push, and he's going to be able to find Fred, Fred Van Fleet in the corner. Gone. He's going to be able to do everything, find all your players. So I can, while I'm not, while I was in shock about it, and you know what I'm saying, I might think there are more talented players in that top 10. I, I The pick does make sense for the Raptors and what they need. So I can't, I can't really knock it. Like I said, I do think there might be more talented players, but in terms of fit, and that's what a lot of the NBA is about what makes players stick and what, what makes players, you know, next thing you know, they're out of the league. It's fit. I think this fit is going to be really good for Scotty. Uh, areas of improvement. Um, pretty sure everyone knows he's not that great of a shooter. I showed it in the video. It doesn't look that bad. And the good thing is it doesn't look like he's afraid to shoot it, right? We saw it with Ben. The worst thing you can do if you, for this one thing, if you can't shoot, is one thing if you're afraid to shoot, right? So at least he's... He's willing to shoot. And part of me is thinking the reason why he went for it is in his pre-drive workouts, he must have shot the ball extremely well to give, you know, some teams, especially the Raptors, the idea that, okay, we might be getting a playmaker right now, but in a couple years, he might become a scorer. You know what I'm saying? So I think they probably saw something for the future in terms of potential that they like. Um, he does, like I said, he does guard one through five, but if it's like a really small guard, really quick, he can sometimes struggle staying in front of him, but I mean, I feel like that's going to, you know, improve, especially once he gets an NBA training program and they really get his lateral quickness like that because he already has it. Um, appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. We're going to be back at it tomorrow with uh, James Booknight.